Uh, well, you just have the whole worksheet. So if you want to do some of the problems tonight, you can probably do four of them, but uh, I'm going to do the rest tomorrow. Uh, so this is the mean value theorem. And uh, the mean value theorem starts with this. Let f be continuous over the closed interval AB. And let it be differentiable over um, AB. So what does it mean to be continuous? You can draw it without picking up your pencil, right? Okay, and what does it mean to be differentiable? You can take the derivative. We call that being a nice function. It's got, it's just has nice, nice properties to it. Uh, there, there's no corners. It's a curve. Okay, so if that's true, if it's continuous and it's differentiable, then we know this: f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. What does that what does that mean? What is, what is it that I just wrote there? Slope, right? Average rate of change. A uh, calculus is about instantaneous rate of change at a given point. I just wrote average rate of change. We did this back in algebra one. Average rate of change is equal to the derivative at some point C for some C in the interval. A, B. In. Here's the big idea. You ready? Suppose I have a parabola. It looks like that. You don't have to draw this. This represents the average rate of change over that given interval. I, I haven't drawn the entire graph, just over the given interval from A to B. Okay. Some point on this curve, when I took the derivative of it, I would get a slope that would be the same as that segment. You tell me, is this point right here, if I look at this, does the derivative of the graph right here have the same slope as that segment? No, why? It's negative, that's positive. You tell me when do I get to a spot where you think that the derivative of the function would be the same slope as that segment. Yeah, if I you know, drew a line tangent, you'd say, hey, those look like they'd be about the same, right? So that would be at a point C that's between A and B. That's what we're saying. That's what the mean value theorem says. We want to come up with those C values and write equations for lines tangent. So let's start right here. Okay. We're going to skip uh, A and B because we're a little bit short on time, but we're going to consider this function right here. What is the average rate of the change of the function over the given interval? The way I calculate average rate of change is I do F of B minus f of a over b minus a. We'll call b the value of 2 and a the value of negative 3. Quick, go have some lunch, come back quickly so we can get to this. Uh, fill your brains with some food. Uh, are those cookies? I, uh, Anger, Kelsey Anger has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Kels. Yes, she would hate you. Okay, what up, dog? Oh, it, propane? Propane? We'll find out. It's not plugged in. Let me just build a fire. All right, here we go. We got work to do. Average rate of change of the function over a given, given interval. We have to do f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Let's just uh, I'll plug in the function. That way we can get these values pretty quickly. x to the third <coughs> plus 2x squared minus 1. I'm going to calculate what? What do I have to calculate? What value do I want to find? So f of b I plug in 2 and I get 15. Minus 
Now what do I plug in? Negative 3. And I get negative 10 over B minus A. <coughs> and I get 25 over 5, which is 5. That's the average rate of change. Uh, no, we don't have, it, it's just on the XY coordinate, we don't have any label. It says find a point C uh, in the given interval, and then we'll sketch a graph that satisfy the mean value theorem. So what does 5 represent? Does 5 represent F prime of C or F of B minus F of A over B minus A? It's, yeah, it's equal to that derivative. So we got 5 is equal to f prime of c. What do I write for f prime of c? What does f prime mean? The derivative. So what do I write? 3x squared plus 4x. So where is the derivative equal to the average rate of change? That's what we're trying to figure out. How do I solve that? Yep. So 0 equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. On your calculator, uh, we can do the quadratic formula. So I'm punch it in quick. What do you get? Program. Quad. Oh, my goodness. Okay, thank you. So we've got base dog 0 0.7, uh, 9, and what else? Negative 2.12. Good job. <coughs> it's wrong. You plugged it in wrong. Check to see if you plugged it in. You got the wrong quadratic formula. It should be 0.79 and negative 2.12. You have to write the program. Maybe you put in the wrong one. No, like Haley has one in hers. You have one in yours. I have one in mine. Maybe you put the wrong one in. Your program that you wrote. You know what I mean? Like when you made the quadratic formula. We're, we're going to have to check that out. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> look at our results. Are 0.79 and negative 2.12, are those in the interval of negative 3 and, uh, and positive 2? Yes. So both these C values work. So in this case, we're going to write uh, two uh, lines um, that are tangent. What I want to do first is I want to quick sketch the graph. And we have a couple points here. We know that if you plug in negative 3, you get out negative 10. So I'm going to plot negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 10, 1, 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to plot 215. And if you look at the graph, you can see that it appears to have behavior something like this. Okay. That's approximately the shape of the graph, right? So I'm going to draw a segment that represents the average rate of change. I don't have arrows because we're talking just we're talking about the interval from negative three to two. You tell me when I get to a spot on the graph where you think that the derivative of the graph would be the same as the average rate of change. Right here? I think you'd also have another one. Over 
to your values, 0.79 and negative 2.12. Is that those values that we're going to have spin? Yes. Yes. So I did negative 3 and negative 10. So back 1, 2, 3, and down 10. And over 2 and up 15. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find equations for lines tangent to the function. So at approximately those points, we're going to draw tangent lines. So in order to write an equation for a line, line 1 and line 2, I need two things to write an equation for the line. What do I need? Point on the line and slope. What is the slope for both of these? Pi. Very good. We determined the slope. That was the whole idea. What is the x value for one of the points on the line? Yeah. Well, approximately. I mean, <clears throat> we came up with the two values right here. We just labeled the red to approximately. Oh, sorry, positive 0 0.79 and then negative 2.12. All right, how do I get the y value? Plug it in. So, <clears throat> however you want to do that, you can go to your table, you can do value. So, we've got. Uh, 0.79, negative 2.12, and so for 0.79 I get 0.74, and for negative 2.12 I get negative 1.54. I can now write equations for the lines, correct? Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. You go ahead and do it. So uh, this uh, group right here. You guys do the first one, you guys do the second one. See what you come up with. Go. Right equation for the line. Okay, so this is what we should get for our equations for our lines when we write them. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to graph them, and you're going to see that the lines should be parallel to the average rate of change. And so y equals 5x minus 3.21. I go down 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to use my slope. I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. My slope is 5. I'm just doing this one right here. out a y intercept of negative 3.21. If I do my other line, I go up to 9.06. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to go down 5, back 1. And maybe not the best example, um, just because it's a very tight window, but as you draw it, does it seem reasonable that those two lines would be parallel to the black line? Yeah, and that they would touch tangent to the graph? Yeah. So that's what we've done. We've found two lines whose uh, rate of change is the same as the average rate of change of the function over that interval. Exactly. So let's try a problem that uh, is not quite as involved. If you flip it over, we're going to get to problem two today, and then tomorrow we'll do three, uh, three four, and five. And uh, you have a worksheet uh, that you'll be able to work on for a lot of the time tomorrow.
So it says use the mean value theorem to find equations for lines tangent to the curve that have slopes equal to the average rate change of the function over the given interval. Confirm your answer by graphing the function and the tangent lines. Provide a rough sketch of the graph. So I need to do this. F of B minus F of A over B minus A is equal to F prime of C. I have to find the C value that satisfies that and write an equation for our line. So I have negative x squared minus 6x. I first need to figure out f of b. What is f of b? Okay. So Hannah says grab the calculator and punch in negative x squared minus 6x. Go to the table, type in 1, and negative 4. So we got uh, negative 7 minus 8 over 4, I'm sorry, 1 minus negative 4. What's negative 7 minus 8? And 1 minus negative 4, so I get negative 3. That's my average rate of change. What's my next step in the process? Very good. So the derivative is negative 2x minus 6. Set that equal to negative 3. Negative 2x is equal to 3. x is negative 3 halves. You tell me. What have I found so far? So for my line, the slope is negative 3, and the point on the line is negative 3 halves is the x value. That's the point at which the instantaneous rate of the change of the curve is the same as the average rate of change. I, I only have one line here. I only have one line. We just came up with one. We did both. Both at a slope of 5. Yep. Yep. And I want to be clear, in this assignment, you only have to come up with one. If there's two, just pick one of them and just do one of them. Since it's quadratic rule, that we'll have just one. Right. Okay. So. Real quick, negative 3, but neg is negative 3 halves in this interval? Is it between negative 4 and 1? Yeah. So, again, we found a value C that's in that interval. That's what the, then either you did something wrong or the function is not continuous or is not differentiable. Okay. So, uh, remember, the initial conditions of the mean value theorem are that it has to be continuous and differentiable. So, you might come up, you, maybe you were dealing with a function that wasn't continuous over that interval. Maybe that was the problem. So we'll finish this off. We have uh, negative 3 halves. How do I come up with the y value? Plug it in. So negative 1.5. And Hannah gets negative 6.25 or 6.75. So now I'll write my equation for my line. y minus 6.75 is equal to negative 3 times x plus Yes, so this is the equation for the line tangent. And what I'd like you to do is to sketch a graph of what we're talking about. So if you look at, so what I really want you is to be able to go to your calculator, press y equals, have that curve, type in negative 3x plus 2.25, okay? As you sketch that graph, yep. <clears throat> yep. 
So it's tangent, but even more than that, if you want to try to check, here's what's also kind of neat. If I go second calculate, um, negative 4, you can see that it has a height right there. And then, if you go second calculate, a value of, say, 1, you can see you come up with negative 7. So something down there, right? So this is the part of the graph that you're really talking about. You know, what I'm saying is that just does it look like those, it's reasonable to say that those would be parallel. Yeah, my graph isn't drawn real well, but that's how you check your answer. So the, <laughs> the question you guys ask again is do we have to? What I'm trying to tell you is I would because I would always want to verify that my answer is correct. And how you verify it is to make sure that the line you graph is tangent and that looks like it has the same slope as the average rate of change. We're just talking about the graph from negative 4 to 1. So negative 4 as a value of, we decided, um, what, 8? And then um, positive 1 is a value of negative 7. And so you can see, at least you can see it's negative and it appears to be steep. So that's, that's, uh, that's good work. So Anyway, um, if you want to, so tomorrow we need to cover examples that involve rational equations and uh, trigonometric equations and uh, finally a radical equation. Um, I'll give you a worksheet right now, so if you want to start, you can, but otherwise you can just get started tomorrow in class. So.